The Book of Mosiah, Chapter 26, Verses 32 and 33. Now I say unto you, Go, and whosoever will not repent of his sins, the same shall not be numbered among my people. And this shall be observed from this time forward. And it came to pass, when Alma had heard these words, he wrote them down that he might have them, and that he might judge the people of that church according to the commandments of God. Verse 22 of the Book of Mosiah. For behold, this is my church. Whosoever is baptized shall be baptized unto repentance. And whomsoever ye receive shall be baptized in my name, and him will I freely forgive. For it is I that taketh upon me the sins of the world, for it is I that hath created them, and it is I that granteth unto them, that believeth unto the end of place at my right hand. For behold, in my name are they called, and if they know me, they shall come forth, and shall have a place eternally at my right hand. And it shall come to pass that when the second trump shall sound, then shall they that never knew me come forth, and shall stand before me. Shalom, and much salome to the twelve tribes scattered abroad, to the natural branches as well as to those grafted in. With that said, before I get started into today's lesson, I would like to state a few things first. I want to thank Anoki said, his son Motsunalan, as well as to the life giver, the earthly mother, who was wisdom, and Kahe, for this lesson today. Now if there is any folly here, know that it is me not them. So, in this lesson today, we are going to be addressing a huge stumbling block for the nation of the house of Israel, and it is going to be dealing with the title Lucifer. Now, the title Lucifer is taken from the uh, book of Isaiah in chapter 14. In the King James Bible, it reads, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Now in this infamous scripture, we see that the Most High is rebuking Shemiheza for his evil workings against the children of men. Now the main reason I say this is because of what is read in the New Testament. And I'm going to pull directly from the book of Revelation, chapter 22, and verse 16. Now here's what it said from the Messiah. It reads, I, Jesus have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. So then how is it that the state of being a bright morning star, this title of Lucifer, how is it that it has caused so many people to stray away from the simple revelations that are brought through in the New Testament in the Messiah? I'm actually going to go on to depth and challenge a lot of the concepts that would have people believe that Jesus is the same entity as Shemi Heza, and that this title Lucifer is nothing more than a title. The main basis for my argument is out of the book of Job. If we go over to chapter 38 and we read verses 1 through 7, it'll let us know that Lucifer is not the only morning star. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sank together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Now, jumping back into the New Testament with this whole concept of there being more than one morning star that sits around the throne of the Most High, uh, we have to look at Revelation and chapter 2. If you read from verse 18 and downward, here's what the Messiah says. Unto the angel of the church of Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who has eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against you, because you sufferest that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Now, if we skip down a little bit further, here's what it reads at verses 26 through 28. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron, 
as the vessel of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. One of the last scriptures that I'm going to be bringing out today is going to be the second book of Peter and chapter 1. If you go down to verse 19, the King James Bible reads it as, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn, and the day star arise in your hearts. Now it's interesting because in the King James Bible it says, The day star arise in your heart. But if you look at other translation, it reads it as the morning star arises in your heart. Now, I'm going to be choosing to read out of the Berean Study Bible because that is what the default is for Bible Hub at the moment. We also have the word of the prophets as confirmed beyond doubt. And you will do well to pay attention to it as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Now, if we're going to go according to the rule of precepts, this Berean study Bible opens up a whole new perspective for us as to what Peter was writing here. Because he says, We also have the word of the prophets as confirmed beyond doubt, and you will do well to pay attention to it as to a lamp shining in a dark place. Now, we're just going to stop right here before we continue reading, because there is another uh, Old Testament scripture here that goes line for line, precept for precept here with that. Now, I'm going to hop over to the book of Proverbs in chapter 6. I'm going to be reading it from verse 20 and downward to verse 24. My son, keep thy father's commandment, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart, and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life, to keep thee away from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Now, it is absolutely astounding how this scripture in the book of Proverbs, of course, talking about, you know, the quote-unquote evil woman here, right? But if we connect it back to what we were reading here in the book of Revelation chapter 2 of the epistle to Theatira, it really brings us to this understanding that this spirit of Jezebel can really seep into the hearts of the people if you don't keep the law, statutes, and commandments that were shared with Moses to the best of your ability. Now, if we hop back here into 2 Peter, um, not only does it allude to a lamp shining in the dark, right, with this Old Testament, quote-unquote Old Testament law, but let's just read from where we left off. Until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Now, there is another scripture alluded to, line for line, precept for precept. Now, go with me to the book of Ezekiel and chapter 36. We're going to start here at verse 16. This is what the Most High was saying to Jeremiah. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their way and by their doings. Their way was before me as the uncleanliness of a removed woman. Wherefore, I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. And I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way, and according to their doings I judged them. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am Yahuwah, the saith Yahuwah the Most High, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen, and gather you out of all countries, and will bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Granted, you have the laws of duality, where you have the Christ consciousness and the Lucifer mind, but according to that law of duality, these two entities are not the same. 